everybody. Good to have you with us tonight. I'm going to ask Brother Ken Reimer, could he lead us in our opening prayer? Pray together. Almighty Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your son, Jesus. A special prayer for the country that we live in, that it may change its direction and look more to you and less to self. Amen. Father, we thank you for the people that we love, that we can share the Bible with, share our lives with, just share everything we can with them. And we look forward to an eternity of sharing with fellow believers. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, my brother. Amen. Being surrendered to God's discipline, and let's, let's just do a quick review here. Being, being, being is a verb. Yes. It's active. It's ongoing. It's continuing. I don't think there's ever going to be a time in my life and your life, and, and we're not going to lecture tonight. I'm going to make sure we really do interactive that we are not exposed to some level of God's discipline. I don't think that discipline is ever going to be off the agenda of my life because I need to be under the discipline of God. So let's understand the being part of it. Being present, active, ongoing, continuing. Then we speak about surrendered. I'm yielding. I'm submissive to it. I'm working it out in the sphere of not frustration, but faith. I'm, I'm, I'm growing. I, I'm, I'm talking about not me. I'm making a point about you. I'm growing to be okay with it. That's what surrender is. And then God's discipline. God, God, God's discipline is the only discipline that has absolute righteousness. The Hebrew writer is going to challenge us to know that sometimes human discipline fails and falters in the area of rightness, rightness, rightness. And I don't think we can, well, many can tell the story of their life and not really have some level of memories about maybe a human discipline that was not right, not timely, not accurate, not appropriate. That's, that's, that's the human reality. But then, here it is, here it is. We come into these four spaces of understanding. I'm reviewing. We're going to get into some new stuff tonight, but I think we really begin with four most of the time. Whenever something breaks out in our life, we always call it penalty, punishment. It's just what we do. The disciples wanted to know who sinned. And Jesus says, well, not, don't apply that in this setting, in this situation. There is a consequence to wrongdoing that will evoke cost and consequences. That's kind of in the fabric of life. God has already put that in the fabric of life. A certain penalty for misbehaving. But four is not always where we ought to be. 
been in ministry long enough, been in counseling folks long enough, discipling, that more often than not, they come into your space, pastor, and maybe they will say it or maybe not, but they're really grappling with pain and trying to connect the dots to some penalty issue. And sometimes it is. But there's three other things on the list. But we normally go right to four. Something wrong that needs to be set right. That's legitimate. Something wrong that needs to be set right. I was just sharing with Joe tonight before we came over. When I'm talking to the brother or the sister, I don't always have to confess something. Sometimes I need to confess your faults to one another. But not always. But when I'm in God's presence, there's usually something I need to confess. Maybe it's not of commission, but maybe it's of omission. And God says to me, man, let me tell you something. I can handle everything that you bring to me, and the only thing I can't handle is what you don't bring to me. I can't handle that. I don't know why you won't keep it 100. Just be real. I already know it, but I need you to declare it in my presence so that you and I can agree on the, the fix. So, penalty. Now, purging, I'm working my way back up the list, is something that needs to be removed or released. This is not necessarily a sin issue. Just something that I need to grow, to be more patient, tolerant, understanding. You know, can I just say that, um, and I want to, by the way, this is a good time to have a question or two. I remember teaching a, a, a class on emotional health, and, um, and I think it came up on another occasion uh, I was teaching. And, and the whole idea about your personality, is that subject to change? And, and, and somebody said, well, you don't really touch people's personality. That's cult-like, that's, that's mind control. You, now, character, temperament, and, and what they're meaning is personality, what do we call it, introvert, extrovert? No, I don't think that this is about sin, your personality, though your personality can reveal character, but your personality is how you're wired. I am more extrovert and talkative. Angie is less talkative, more introvert. But here's the thing, I don't think that there's any part of us that doesn't come under transformation. What part of me, child, that God, I say, God, I don't really need to be renewed in that. I don't really need you to hands off that. Now, what I'm saying is, and it's under purging, I understand temperament and character, yeah, and somebody says, no, don't get into personality because that's kind of, uh, good to see you guys tonight, that's kind of what cults do, they get into your person. But here's what I'm trying to say. Let's deal with extrovert, introvert. So here's the person who is, talks a lot. Well, that can be used as a gift. Here's the person who talks less. That can be used as a gift. They listen more. They're not into talking. They're, they listen more. They, they hone those skills. So they're going to be used by God to be more active in understanding and listening. The gift is not the tongue, but the ears. 
And, and here's a person who talks a lot. They're focusing more on the tongue than the ears. But here's what I'm trying to say, that, that when it comes to purging, here's the person that talks less when they're coming under the renewing of God. You may be able to tell now you should have spoke up about that. You, you can't keep quiet on that. You follow me? They said, I'm just not that kind of person. But not that. You got, oh, here's the person who talks all the time, and you say, you should have listened on that. That's, that's transformation. And so purging brings me into. Now, 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 now Deborah, let's just say a person has a problem with gossip. God is probably going to send them through a discipline moment where they shouldn't be even talking on anything for a moment, even if it's true. <laughs> because you know where this is going to go. That's right, it's going to go left. So just, just zip it for a moment. Just learn, you know, brothers and sisters are talking about something. Just, just learn, home. That's you're going to have to fight that now because I'm used to talking. You know? <laughs> Maybe... If you don't put it on your mouth, maybe carry a piece of tape in your pocket. <laughs> okay, just hold on to the tape and say, okay, okay. What do you think about the issue of purging? Now, we're not talking about sin. We're talking about flaws and, and warts and wrinkles. How do we separate that from penalty? I, I'm making a difference. I'm making a distinction. Maybe you say it's, it's uh, half on uh, six on one and half the other, the other. But no, purging is not necessarily a sin issue, but it's growing in weakness to strength. What do you think about that? Is, this, is, that, is, that, is that illegitimate or is it, does it sound about right? What do you think about it? Right here. I used to curse all the time. I'm sorry, sis? I used to curse all the time. Yes, yes. And you know, sis, that's what makes you the woman of God. You keep it real. Amen. You keep it real right here. God, as the husband, then purges us. Yes. He purges the. He cleans us up. Yeah. You know, he like a tree. You know, he cuts up so we'll grow. That's right. Stuff. He uh, purges us. Yeah. So uh, think of Paul. Grow. Think of Paul. Do you know the reason for that thorn? He says it. That he will not be lifted up for the abundance of revelation. You know, what that, you know can I translate that? Pride. Man, I got that. Even Peter said, man, this guy is deep. He writes stuff hard to be understood. Man, that's a deep brother right there. And he says, man, I'm telling you what. I, God says, you know, I, I, I I need to work on that right there, right here, right there. Scripture says in Psalms, this is one thing, let the righteous smite me because it's an act of kindness. And the righteous here speaks of somebody who knows the right thing to do. The scripture go back and say, it is the word of God that makes me clean. So therefore, mm -hmm. if somebody is going to correct me, if I'm going to be purged with information that you tell to make me clean, yeah. then that might be hard sometimes. I remember I have a problem where my nieces and nieces said to my brother, say, you know, auntie is too hard when I was correcting, but I would use scripture to correct. Yes. Yes. And uh, he says, but even though it is hard, it is wrong. You know, and, and, and I say sometimes somebody is correcting me. It's Seems hard. Yes. It yes. seems hard, but let us, as the scripture said, humble yourself. And I'm yes. learning. Yes, right. It's not asking God to humble me. Yeah. Me to take it when my yeah. mother or my sister oh, that's good. is smiting me yeah. to turn the other cheek. That's good. He said, and by the words, humble yourself before the mighty hand of God. You do that. Yes. God says, I can do it. Yes. But you do that. Right here, John. Purging is like me purging myself. I tend to do certain things and certain, like go to certain mental gymnastics, but it's 
you have to stop because those things will hinder another person and let God speak to them and then your way is really you know you get away and you think I think of something and then I can relay it correctly that's so true but I have to get out of the way that's so true I purge myself of myself that's so true oh my brother and, and these things can be not always simple approval addiction as somebody says I, I have an addiction to be approved by everybody now who wants to be hated now there might be a slice of percentage that said I love to be hated I, I'm that guy I'm that guy and that guy. nobody really wants to be hated but but you can't always be approved and if that, by man and if that's to go there's something God going to purge out of you because if you are on a mission for man's approval, at some point it's going to run contrary with God's approval. So you got to purge it out of you. And this is what needs to be removed or released. Preparation. Remember I said we go to four most of the time. Every time something bottom drops, I'm sin, sin, sin. But no, it's purity, purging, preparation, now, we're really out of the sphere of sin now. We're into preparation, values and virtues that need to be instilled. Preparation. David was not in sin when he was dodging spears. Can you imagine that all of a sudden, whoa, what? what the, you told me? So I said, yeah, that's the first of many to come. <laughs> and you know, Renair, this was not two or three weeks when David, who was not even invited to the party, so to speak, and Samuel says, "These are all your sons," and he said, "Well, oh yeah, 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 no, 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 yeah, oh yeah, David. You imagine this one, oh yeah, David, out there keeping his father's sheep, and his brothers, you know, they didn't really look on him with a lot of esteem." We know the iniquity of your heart. You know, they, they, they didn't really, that was a mindset. But the next thing he knew is that, I'm saying symbolically, he's got this man holding a flask of oil, whispering into his ear, you, you, you're going to be the next king. <laughs> wow. And he doesn't go down and get business cards. <laughs> you know? King elect, go, go down and try on crowns. How can I see it? <laughs> Next thing he know, man, he's dodging spears. Years, years before he was coronated. Preparation. Preparation. Had nothing to do with sin. And you know, it got heavy. It got so heavy for David that he went to the enemy's camp. And feigned madness. <laughs> that saliva drip on him. And man, he said, look, look, when you want you when you just want the enemy to take you in, man, that that is amazing that he would go to that spot. But but God shut the door. He said, no, you know, and that one of the you know comical times in scripture where the king says, Listen, listen, I got enough crazy folks around here. I don't need any more mad people around here, man. I got enough of them. And he went into the cave of Adullam. And he wrote that great song. He was at the lowest point of his life. And God sent these people. He didn't even want them into his space. And they became his mighty men. Can you imagine what that place must have been like? I, I, I don't want to sound so gross. All these men, real men, but even do, do, well. The atmosphere, the aroma of that place. <laughs> Man, that was not, but, but he was being made into the David that would write the psalm. Preparation, values. And then finally, where we really struggle with is purpose. I'm talking about being under God's discipline, purpose, a higher aim. Not always immediately revealed. Not always. Wish to God he would give me clarity. Sometimes I have to dig for it. Prayer, study, discipling, quiet meditation. 
a word from God in the scriptures, and then I understand. Okay, let's then, we looked at these, this section, but I want to uh, go then to this thing here again. I'm just revering here. Our resistance to God's discipline is always a losing fight. Just know that. I will not win that fight. And that's not a fight, Greg, I want to win. If I can say win, I don't ever want to win out over God. Tug of war. And God lets go. I'm in a bad way now. He gives up on me. He turns me over to a reprobate mind. I need to really stay under the discipline of God. Right here, right here, Pastor. If you ever think you've won, you're headed down the wrong path. Oh, my stars. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Say it again, Stan. That if you think you've won, you're headed down the wrong path. Oh, my stars. You know, boy, you don't want to win that one. You really don't want to win that. Now put that into the shoe leather of life, not just God, but in a human being that God is using to put something in my life. And I'm out to really dish them, defeat them, reject them, and I win that battle. No, I've lost the war. Sometimes I just need to receive it. Hear what they're saying. I understand what they're saying. I mean, really, I just need to sit there and take it and say thank you. I mean that. I appreciate that, you know. Uh, now, humble surrender to God's discipline invites God's grace. God gives grace to who? The humble. That's what it says. He gives grace to the humble. Let's define humility. What's humility? Let's define humility. What's some, what's some anonyms uh, that we can, uh, uh, if somebody says, tell me what humility is, what is humility? I know there's a Greek word for it, but what is humility? I like to define it as uh, valuing others more than myself. Yeah, that's a, that's a value. It's, it's, it's valuing others more than myself. Humility is I say an accurate assessment of your own value, which means that my value doesn't have to supersede your value. See, humility only is an accurate assessment of your value. And my value doesn't have to be over your value. It doesn't have to be over your value. In fact, it's not. Who values? themselves over others, a narcissist, an egotist. Right here, my brother. Yeah, I think humility would, would better be served if I just saw myself as no better, but no lower. Oh, sure. Because if I, if I sure. see myself as lower, sure. there's a self-esteem issue there. And I like that. That's why I say it's an, it's an excellent value of yourself. Because the Bible says, don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to think. It doesn't say think low of yourself than what you ought to think. You ought to think about your own value because you do have a value. Right here, my sister. John says, I must decrease so that I can increase. Yeah. So if that is taking it down, it doesn't mean that the last yeah. necessity. Sometimes you need to take it down. Yeah. It shows that you esteem yourself. Yeah, so put that in the context. Say, on the same level, yes. Thank you, and I'm sorry, sis. Put that in the context of John, and Jesus says, none born of woman is greater than John. That's quite a statement. But he's talking about the mission of John to announce Messiah. That's quite a mission. Who, who? I mean, that's, that. He, John was the divine maitre d' to announce the son. That's quite a task right there. That's, and man, you got to come down a bit, man. You sitting at the table and get you right here and say, I've been born to announce Jesus. That's my birthmark. You got to have some pride in that. You got to have some value in that. But wait a minute, don't get you get beside yourself. So he says, I've got to decrease. I've got to come down. I got to get out of the way so that you can do your thing. Right here, my brother. That's 
that's it. it. So don't devalue yourself. Oh, that's so true. He will not devalue you. He will not disavow you because you are his creation. That's it. You will never, ever be degraded by God. You will never be degraded by God. Never, ever. Discipline doesn't degrade. It affirms your value. My brother said that, again, I use that for, again, the illustration, that this misbehaving child, and I think I can help out, but it ain't my child. I think I might be able to help you out for a minute. <laughs> you know, you ever see these children that, you know, man, they are just, whoa, man. They out of control, man, and, and in the store. I've seen that, too. I've seen that. I've seen a kid just, oh, my stars. It was really, wow. Oh, man. Shut up. Shut up. I'm like, wow. That ain't my generation. That would have been some repercussions and consequences. <laughs> I mean, hey, look here. No, mother was not a bit on the spot. We go into a store, you don't want nothing, don't need nothing, don't touch nothing. Right. Now I've got to sit and wait till this kid moves. They ain't got no money. I'm doing the shopping. And the parent is not moving their kid. They're watching you. So don't you touch my boy. He, got, he can be there. He got the right. But see, that's the problem there. So we know that we've got to have this understanding of what's right and wrong and what's good and bad. But God will never degrade us. I saw a hand right there. Right here. Yes, he won't degrade us, but he will humble us. Sure. Sure. And he will, doesn't he? He will. We need him to humble us. We need him to keep our value system intact. We really do need him. I will get beside myself when I pull up at the building if it's not too personal, church. I'm telling you, and I had my prayer before coming here. I was just reminding God how unworthy I am to even be coming here to do this. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, if it's not too personal, I was just reminding him how unworthy I am to be pulling up in the parking lot to come in here and do this, how unworthy I am because I will get beside myself right. if I'm not careful. Right here, my sister. God bless you. Keep it real with God. Now, some areas of yielding to God's discipline must be done over and over again. I've got to keep on doing it because it's a battle. It's a challenge for me. And, and I've got to enter into that space again and again and again. And then finally, fully surrender to God's discipline may take us low for a moment but an uplifting experience is on the way. I gotta remember that. It may take you low for a moment. Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things that he suffered, yet he has become the author of salvation to all those who obey him. Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things, yet he has become. There is a lowering and there is an elevating. It's coming. Wait on God, right here, my sister. Go ahead. I was like, hurry up before, hurry up before. Go ahead. We're there. We're there. Right when you said that, I'm thinking of Hebrews 12. Okay. Read that. Hebrews 12. Read that. That's the whole thing, but I want to get to the point there. Yeah. I, Fully I, surrendered to God just may take us as low for a moment, but an uplifting experience is coming. So read that. Okay. You have but an uplifting experience is on the way. It says, 
says here in scripture, I'm trying to think now, uh, in verse 11, no discipline seems pleasant hey. at the time, Amen. but painful. Hey. Later on, however, it produces the harvest of righteousness Amen. and peace Amen. for those that have been trained by it. That's what it said, that's word. Yes. Amen. And so I oh, want to commend you. <laughs> Don't be surprised how low life God can permit you to go. Amen. Right there. Don't be surprised with that. I, I have 10 words that I need to share. I heard, it's not my words, I heard it on the radio the other day. And that is, God permits what he hates <laughs> to accomplish what he loves. Amen. Oh, my stars. Amen. I love that. I love that. Amen. That's good, that sound. I did sit in the <laughs> office with that sister. 20 years ago, 20 years ago, over 20 years in my office. I won't call her name, though you don't know who she is, you'll meet her in glory. Who was sitting in my office, beautiful woman of God, battling with cancer fighting for her life, whose husband had visited her in the hospital and said he didn't want this anymore. That's a true story. I did sit there with her in my office. I know her by name. Who did discover that there was someone else? who did end the divorce, lose her home. That was real. That's not make believe. And she sat in my office. And I said to her, can we clarify your options? The first option is for you to just say, I can't handle God like that. Touches me to this day. I can't deal with a God like that. That's your option. That's an option. Some do, some take that option. The second option is that can you just keep me at the level I am? She was a teacher in and she knows her well in the Bible class. She taught the children's department. Faithful, like you are, at service. And she's doing chemo in the hospital, and her husband shows up at the side of her bed and says, I don't want this anymore. And she told me the day when the movers came and, and with the loss of income, he's gone, and the eviction. And the second option is that, just keep me at the level I'm at. And the third option, I want to grow higher. And I'm telling you the truth from the Lord. This happened when I said that there was, there was a, she began to wail and weep. I'm talking about bawling, really. This is a true story. I want to go deeper. That's, that's an option. I mean cries. And I just said, sis, I want to give you your space. So I just stepped out of my office and make about 10 minutes, I looked back in and she was, I'm talking about still wailing and weeping. Well, eventually I came in. I, it's so visceral in my mind. <laughs> Shaking. That's what she said. Amen. Their sister's health was restored. I'm telling you, this is true. That sister, down the road, was put into a 
whole new home as a single person. Amen. She continued to be faithful. Amen. I'm telling you the true story. She teaches a podcast to this day. And her husband, after years, came back and said, when this didn't work, well, can we? She said, well, it's not about forgiveness, but I just don't really need that now. Because she said, I want to go deeper. I want to go higher. I, I want to prove God faithful in this. But she left her office not knowing how that was going to happen. I'm just telling you that that's what, see, this is being surrendered. This uplift is coming. Well, let's, let's just spend the balance to get a couple of these new areas that we want to look at. First of all, being surrendered to God's discipline, I've got to be an A student in God's school of hard knocks. I've got to be an A student. Let's look at the word. In this you greatly rejoice, Though now for a little while, if need be, though that phrase catches my attention because, you know, when I'm not going through everything, that's just devotional reading. But when I'm going through and I am on my back, a little while, and if need be, man, I don't like none of it. <laughs> a little while, it ain't a little while. It's too long, too much, too heavy. And need be. I got a prayer life. I've been good. We read the Bible in our beliefs when things are right, and we read it in our battles when things are wrong. Let's be honest about that. We read the Bible in our beliefs when things are going good, but when they're going bad, we read that verse in our Battles. I got to battle for the truth of that verse. You're reading it to me, Greg, and I'm trying it, but Greg, I'm not feeling that right now. I'm trying. I'm feeling it right now. I'm going through that. I know what you're going through. I got to fight through that. You have been grieved by various trials. That the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though tested by fire, may be found to praise, go, honor, and go. Now, okay, let's get into this verse. Now, in this you greatly rejoice. Now, James also said something like that. When you fall into dial of this child, count it all joy. When you fall, count it all joy. When you fall into... Now, both Peter and James put joy before the mess. I mean, just reading the text. I wonder why they did that. Now, notice what I just said. They didn't put joy after this is what you're going through, now be joyful. They just reading the sentence structure. James says, count it all joy. Okay, I know where you're going with this, James. When God is blessing me, when God, my health is heavy. I mean, it's, it's right. When, when I've got the promotion, I know where you're going with this, James. Said, no, no, let me, get my, let me teach you, man. When you're going through trial, you know, it's kind of like... Uh, What's the guy, uh, what you talking about, Willis? <laughs> what you talking about, man? What I'm going through, that doesn't seem right. But he's not talking about what we do in our human self. This is not in our human self. This is in our transformed self. This is not in our earthly man. This is in our renewed man. What he says is that you spend time investing in joy so that when the bottom drops out, your joy comes out. No, I'm talking to me. I'm talking to Ben. When I don't have to look for joy, that means it's lost and found, not found. Where is your joy in the good times? You've got to build joy so that when the bottom comes, that's your default position. I've got to praise him in what you do. I've got to get into those songs. I've got to get into those songs. I've got to read and celebrate the goodness of God every day. 
I've got to get up every day and thank God that I can get up with movement because one day is coming that I may be, I can't move. But I haven't thanked him when I can move. That's why you are about to say something bad when you can't move because you haven't invested in it. That's why they put joy first. Church, can I tell you something? I don't want to be a hypocrite. I'm still working on this. But in your private devotions, you need a Bible and a songbook. And we often don't bring the songbook. Bring a songbook into your private devotion. Sing a song or two to God. Come on, sing to God. I'll get back to the word, but God, I just want to sing. I, I, I do, I, I, I do, uh, yeah, my song in the morning. My song in the morning is with my prayer, and I don't purport to be any more righteous than you all, but I'm singing to God in the morning. I'm singing with the angels. They are singing all the time. I, I've got to get, I can't just sing at church. <laughs> I've got to sing in my own private moments and cultivate a spirit of praise. So in this you greatly rejoice that now for a little while, now let's break down a little while. How do we understand little while in this verse? Not trying to put you on the spot, but how do you understand little while? Because I'm telling you something, man, something don't be like a little while. This is too long, too much, man. I've been going through this for months. That's too much, too long. I, look, I need some relief. No, I'm telling you the truth. How do you understand a little while in this verse? I try to understand it in light of eternity and heaven. Ooh. <laughs> That's it, my brother. Yeah. See, God says, man, set your affections where? Above. Things above. Yeah. Not on things like You've got to get into an eternal mindset. Amen. And when you get into an eternal mindset, it's always a little while yeah. like that. Isn't that what Jesus meant when he said the kingdom of God is at hand? That's exactly. It is at hand. It is in manifestation. But he was in a heavenly mindset because he was about to go through some stuff. At the beginning of his ministry, he was about to go through some Hades. But in his mind, it was, it was in the manifestation. You've got to cultivate an eternal mindset. Then if you're not thinking eternally, you're going to be tripped up in time. If you're not thinking eternally. Now, Ken, I'm going to say this to you. It's not too personal. I don't know how you deal with what you go through. The loss of your pride? I don't know how. I came from the office, bedroom office, I set up the house, 1 30, 2 o'clock at night, one night studying, and walked into the bedroom, and I literally had fear on how I would handle if Angie was not laying there. I said, I don't even know how I would handle this. I, I literally said, I, I, but he'll give you. I, I literally had fear, a phobia moment. I, I'm just talking about me. I said, I don't even know how to even, how to even deal with that if, if she was not, but God gives you that, gives you that. But when you're dealing with the eternal, you can handle it. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. yeah. You got to deal with the eternal. You got to settle things in the eternal. No, your pastor, your deaconship, your children's journey. You gotta deal with it in the eternal. In the forever. This ain't forever. Seems like forever, but it ain't forever. Everything has a shelf life in time. Everything has a shelf life. Right here. Read that again, sister. Just want to let the Spirit of God speak again. In First Peter, he says, The end of all things is near. Therefore, be of sound judgment and sober spirit for the purpose of 
2,000 years plus have passed. But he says it's near. He's thinking eternally. He's thinking eternally. And eternally, it's near. Because eternity is forever. This is just a long time. Now, now, thank you, sister. Now, a little while and if need be. What's the need be for it? Need means what? Necessary? Vital? Useful? Need be. Need be. Advantageous? These are, so yeah, there's no wasted trials. There's no wasted burden. God don't send me through something just to let me go through something. And say, so, you know what? Man, I really didn't, I really didn't, I really didn't have enough in my hand. I'm sorry. My bad. <laughs> God don't do that. He, 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 he knows what he's doing. Are we to believe that the devil, borrowing the narrative of Job, has to have permission to do what he does? I'm asking. Is that theology or is that a one done and out? Sir? Only in Job's life there had to be divine permission. No. What do you think? Everybody's life, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Because you, you, you last thing I checked, you God's child. And, and you know, like in the natural, boy, don't you, that's my boy. That's my, you don't just go up and mess with somebody's child. No, no. There is a divine permission that God gives. And he doesn't permit what is not outside of his purpose. Right. Let's just settle that issue. He doesn't permit what's outside of his purpose. And say, one of the things you've heard me say, good you from the pulpit, God will never let the devil finish what he starts. You got to believe that. He may start it, but God says, step aside, I'm going to finish it. God will never let the devil start it and finish because he is the alpha and the omega. You may start it, but I'm going to finish it. Right here, right here. If need be, I'm looking at it. It's him. If need be. He said the lady was so angry and she was hurting. She wasn't rejoicing. She yeah. was crying. Job was cursing. Yes. Yes. He was angry. Yes. Even Don't fear. Today. So you, it, it doesn't mean that it always has to be in a state of rejoicing. That's right. If need be, you can be. That's angry. right. Can be angry. That's right. Do we. That's what it takes to purge yourself. Do we use those P words to understand what's happening? Mm -hmm. Purpose? No, I'm asking. Purge. Purging? Mm -hmm. Preparation? So if I throw my hands up and say, I don't know what this means, God said, go back to school. Do your homework. Purpose, preparation, purging penalty. Now, I may not have the specificity of what, you know, how the, but I've got a general template on what this is about. But Ellsberg, Ellsberg, who was a missionary in South Africa, I think, a nurse, a missionary nurse, did love God, did serve God on the missionary field, but she did get sick. And they did pray. And she got sicker to the point of death. And she had young children. And she had even adopted two of the children from Africa, little kids. And her prayer changed toward her closing years. It was not for healing, but just help me to know that you understand God. Just help me to know that you understand what I'm going through. Help me to know that you understand. This is, this is the need be for it. This is the necessary part. You got to work that out in a battle. You got to work that out in faith. Nick, did you have your hand? You got to work that out with prayers and tears. I think if I'm not about going back to that passage in Jesus, about Jesus with, with tears. 
cries. He, he, he vehement tears. He cried. And you got to work that out with some tears and, and cries and pain. And you, you, it ain't, it ain't, mm -hmm. spiritual warfare is not always pretty. Yeah. Yeah. Right here, right here, my brother. When it says that he was heard, he prayed with fervent tears, you know, it, it gives you this, the idea that he's in the garden yeah. of Gethsemane before he's about to be lifted That's up. That's it. Now, on the outside, you say, well, how did God hear him if he just let him die on the cross? Yeah. Something there, but it, it's his. It, it's his mindset, the eternal mindset that, that that's changed it. through the cross. That's it. And 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 brother, he, you know that he didn't want to go through this thing. He was born for it, but came right to it and says, "Man, I don't know. This is heavy. I, I have to go through this, this hellacious experience. I got to carry this cross through this." I think he had known that he had no option but to do it, but he had to get himself into the moment, right? Can I just say this to you? I know we're running out of time. I was just sharing this. I've shared it before. Jesus says, take up your cross, right? Bear your cross. What does that word picture look like when you're going through trial? You're carrying a cross, right? That's, that's the word picture. And I, I, I draw this out sometimes in discipling people, counseling people. I literally draw it out. And, I, you know, the little picture we draw with the little head, the arms, and, and I draw the cross, and I draw the ground, and they're on the ground carrying the cross. But then I said, this is, this, and then we write some stuff. Pain, agony, divorce, whatever. But then I say, coming right back to your brother, I flip the sheet and said, let's draw something else. I draw the ground. And I draw that same person not walking, but prostrate, as it were, under the ground and the cross under the ground. And I said, what's wrong with that picture? Hear me now. I'm making a point. You can't even see the person of the cross. Here's what I say to you. When you can't see the person bearing the cross, that's not God's cross. That's what you have decided to feel about it. He's not going to put that on you. That's, that's your anger. That's your worry. That's your anxiety. I'm talking to me. That's your phobia. That, 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 the ground, all you can just see is the ground. You can't even see the person of the cross. I draw that picture and I said, what's wrong with that picture? This is where you have decided what this means. And God says, that's right. not my cross. Right, I understand. That I'm not going to put you in a situation where I cannot even see you or the cross. Amen. Amen. That's you. You've got to come up out of that. Faith, hope, trust, heaven, whatever I've got to do. I've got to hold on to this. Even death could be a blessing of my transition, whatever, that God is going to work it out so that I can get myself off, off the ground and you can see me bearing the cross. Amen. Right here, my friend. Amen. Uh, there's many things that, you know, after Jesus prayed that prayer that he could have tripped up on on the way to the cross. He could have, the way his attitude towards uh, the one that uh, betrayed him. That's right. Oh, there you go. Uh, the, the, when, the, when the guys came to, he gave him a kiss and the, the, the sword That's was right. Changed. Mm -hmm. He could have made an error there. There you go. In his heart or yeah. in reality. There you go. They're, they're both the same thing. Yeah. Or when, when he got with Pilate, how he answered Pilate. Yeah. You know, all those things. How do you answer That's perfectly? That's right. So very profound. Unless you have it. You so very like profound. Jesus did at, before the cross. Thank you. Got it all together. Thank you, sir. And in fact, it said, despising the shame, he sat down at the right hand of God. He endured the cross, right? For the joy that was set before him. He settled that in the garden. That's what you're saying. He settled that issue. That, and so as we close, 
you've got to settle this issue. Sometimes you've got to say to the devils, what if? What if I lose the job? What if the cancer is irreversible? Come on, join in with me. You, I want to think about it. No, think about it and put it on the table. What if? What if I, 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 I lose my reputation? What if? What if uh, uh, my wife leaves me? What if? And you've got to take that what if and put it in the context of what Peter is saying. So here it is. Be an A student in God's word. And by the way, you are a student. We are enrolled. This is not a drop and ad thing. You remember that one, the drop and ad? <laughs> Man, drop and ad was useful sometimes, you know. We don't want to tell our children about dropping. Do they still have drop and ad? I don't know if they got drop and ad. You know, when you're taking some of these tough courses, man, I mean, I'm dropping ad, and I'm dropping it, I'm getting out of here right quick, this ain't working. I think you've got so many, what, a week or so, you know, you can't go halfway through and I'm going to drop it, no, that's too long. <laughs> and, and, you know, you, you were enrolled in this course. You, you know, and, and guess what? It, it ain't no, it, 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 there ain't no electives. It's all necessary. You got to take the course. You got to do this thing. Because God says you are a student. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. It has been a blessing for you to share with us tonight. We pray as we journey through this lesson on being surrendered. There's so much more we got to cover that God is going to grow us and help us and guide us in this. Uh, Brother Rod, if you can lead us in closing prayer. Uh, Brother Rod, pray for Joe as well as others that uh, you know may be on your heart. But I just have them probably in my mind because I know that. Uh, just the conversation that we were going through. He was really, really um, fighting through some emotional stuff, and Rosa was there. And just pray for him. And uh, he's about to uh, prayerfully go to rehab uh, with a, the knee for about eight to ten weeks in Windsor. That's up at your neighborhood. I think he has to go that far because that was one of the things that also were available who could do the dialysis. And pray for Rosa, because that's quite a trip for her to go up. So, hey, might be others to pray for. But Angie is not here tonight because I didn't have time to make it back to the house to get her. So she's veering. I, 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 I went over with Joe. We started my but it went over, and I wasn't about to leave him. We really needed to talk. And Angie said, no problem, I'll watch it. But that's why she's not here tonight. Lord willing, she'll be back with us. Okay, all right there, my brother. Just for the guidance that it gives us, the encouragement it offers us, Father, as we face uh, different challenges through this life. Um, and I appreciate the idea of that eternal mindset, Father. I'm just praying that uh, it'll stay with us. Um, there's a lot of things that are distracting us and pulling at us and challenging our faith, Father. And I pray that um, your word, Father, will pierce through all of that, that it'll guide us, that it will strengthen us and encourage us as we face these challenges, Father. Um, I'm praying that we continue to look to each other, Father, that we'll do our best to bear each other's burdens mm -hmm. and support each other, Father, through these uh, ups and downs that we experience in life. Uh, Father, we know you established a church for that um, so that we can uh, be a support to each other, Father, so I pray that we'll truly tap into that and, uh, and use the, the wisdom of the church, Father, um, so we can be there for each other. Uh, Father, we continue to pray for our church body. This is something we continually pray for, uh, the health of our church body, Father. We know there are so many people uh, battling different kinds of illnesses and um, suffering from pain um, and other types of physical ailments, Father. Um, and we continue to pray for them, Father. We, uh, we know that this is, they're in your hands, Father. Nothing's outside of your control. Pray, Father, above all things, that you'll maintain their faith in you, um, that we can be a support to them and, and help them, Father, in their times of discomfort and pain. Uh, Father, we want to pray for our brother Joe. Uh, I do
Rodriguez and just uh, continue uh, to be with him, Father. And we thank you for the example that he's setting, Father, by maintaining uh, a good spirit, um, even though we know there are some challenges that he's dealing with, Father. Um, I pray that you will give him physical healing, Father, if it's within your will. Uh, we want to pray for Rosa as well. Um, we know that it, it can be taxing, Father, with all the travel uh, in order to receive the treatment. Uh, we know it's not an easy thing, Father. So we ask that you will give her, um, give her the endurance and stamina she needs to support him, Father, uh, and help us to look for opportunities to serve and help as we can. Uh, please continue to guide us uh, throughout the remainder of this evening and this week. Uh, again, we thank you so much for bringing us into this space to study your word. Thank you for um, the wisdom and the guidance that it offers us, Father. I pray that we continue to tap into it uh, and use it to be better uh, and more faithful servants to you. Uh, thank you for all that you do, and please guide us home safely as you travel tonight. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you.